Hello and welcome back. In this video, we're really going to start the series that I'm calling Hero Quest in Depth, where we're going to be getting into different aspects of Hero Quest, and specifically in this video, we're going to be talking about hero strategy and how to play optimal heroes for the game Hero Quest, which has long been one of my favorites and I consider a family game. So the exact objective, of course, for the party of heroes is going to change each quest because each quest does have a different objective, something different the heroes have to do in order to win, and that's read out by Zargon at the start of each quest. But, in general, the heroes are going to be doing a lot of the same thing from quest to quest, which is going in and killing monsters with basically the same kinds of resources, although they will get some different equipment and, and uh, upgrade themselves a little bit uh, as the game goes on. But basically, the heroes have got to be able to go into a dungeon, kill a bunch of monsters, and get out without being killed themselves. Hero Quest, of course, uses dice-based combat. You've got attack dice, and you've got defend dice as well. So it's what I call an active defense system, because not only does the attacker roll dice, but uh, the defender does as well to try to defend themselves from any hits that may have been uh, inflicted on them during an attack. Any hits, that's the skulls that are rolled on the white dice, go that go undefended, uh, decrease the number of body points that a character has whether that's a monster or a hero. Now, typically, at our tables, we call those body parts. How many body parts does the hero have? Because, I don't know, we just think that's funny. So when you lose all of your body parts, you're dead. So that's basically what's going on in the game and what the uh, player characters for the heroes have to optimize for. So what is basic hero strategy in Hero Quest? Well, it's basically this. The heroes need to throw as many attack dice against monsters as they possibly can in every round, uh, every round of the game. Hero Quest is definitely one of those games where the most effective defense is a highly effective offense because it just comes down to if the monsters are not alive when it comes back around to Zargon's turn, then they can't attack the heroes. And so the heroes shouldn't want to leave any monsters alive, if they possibly can, at the end of a round, and then Zargon, Zargon won't have anything to attack with and won't be effective on Zargon's turn. And the resources, basically, that the heroes use to eliminate monsters are their attack dice. And there are only so many attack dice that the heroes can throw against the monsters in a round. In the starting setup for the game, that's going to be eight combat dice. If all of the heroes were able to throw their attack dice against the monsters, they'd be able to throw eight. The uh, barbarian throws three, uh, both the dwarf and the elf throw two, and then the wizard throws one. Now, there can be a little bit of variation there because, of course, the wizard or the elf might choose to uh, use a spell and therefore uh, change up the number of attack dice there. But generally speaking, there are only going to be eight combat dice that the heroes can throw against the monsters in a round until they upgrade some equipment later on. But still, that number doesn't get that much larger. It's still a very limited number of dice that the heroes get to throw per round. And so it can be really bad if the heroes are not set up, don't maneuver correctly, don't set themselves up correctly you know, on the board in order to optimize themselves to be able to throw all of those dice against the monsters. Of course, sometimes it's not possible, and Zargon will definitely be looking for opportunities to minimize the number of dice that are thrown against the monsters in a given round. And then, of course, sometimes dice just miss. But that's why we're not talking about how many monsters you eliminate a turn or something like that, because the only thing that the heroes have control over is how many dice they're throwing. I mean, they can their movement and such like that. But basically, the heroes can control how many dice they're going to throw against the monsters. And the more dice they throw against the monsters, the better. So the heroes shouldn't be leaving their attack dice unthrown in any given round, if at all possible. So basically what happens is the heroes need to open a door and then go in strong. Charge in, try to eliminate as many monsters there, because if they're dead, they won't be able to fight back on Zargon's turn. This is an aspect that the game itself gives a lot of control to to the heroes. The heroes are in are in control basically of the game's pace, and that's because only the heroes can open doors. Of course, once the doors are open, they can't be closed again, but the heroes have control of the pacing of the game because if they don't want to deal with more monsters than are already on the board, then they just don't open another door. That's easy enough. When they're ready to uh, attack more monsters or ready for more monsters to be on the board, then they go and open more doors. This means that the players should think about what the player lineup is going to be, what the hero lineup is going to be. Because you've got uh, the four different heroes, of course, 
And a pretty common lineup is for the Barbarian to go first. The Barbarian has the most hit points and has the uh, most number of attack dice. And then both the Dwarf and the Elf have two attack dice. The Dwarf has a little bit more, uh, has a as an additional hit point, has one more body point than the Elf does, although the Elf has spells. And so typically people put them in the middle and then the wizard typically goes last. That seems to be a pretty standard lineup for the heroes across here. And so if the heroes open a door at the start of their lineup, like we typically do and is probably optimal player strategy, because you don't have to do anything on your turn. The heroes can line up and then, you know, past turns until they're all lined up outside of doors again, and then they open the door kind of like a SWAT team that bursts open the door and then charges into the room and tries to attack everything that's inside. And so that often happens, and it will often be the barbarian that goes in first, makes those attacks, and then the elf and the uh, dwarf follow up, and then the wizard comes in behind. And then the heroes rinse and repeat for every room as they're going through the dungeon. Now, there is an alternate lineup here, which we've come to use a lot. And instead of going barbarian, dwarf or elf, dwarf or elf, and then wizard, I think there's a pretty strong argument for having the wizard go in first. And this is because instead of leading off with the strong hitter, being the barbarian, Instead, you're going to move the Barbarian to the end of the lineup. That way, the Barbarian can basically kind of play cleanup. Anything that the other three heroes weren't able to take care of, the, hero, the, uh, the Barbarian can come in and throw all three attack dice against it. We've also found that this is a rather effective lineup because it means that, in many cases, the wizard will be more likely to be able to use the spells. Often, it seemed to be the case that if the wizard was left until the very end, then sometimes the other heroes were already blocking line of sight. Once the heroes had already gone in and tried to make their attacks, if there were monsters left, sure, the wizard can come in and try to make an attack, but the wizard can come in and try to cast a spell, but the problem is many times the other heroes are blocking all of the opportunities for the wizard to have line of sight to cast a spell on a monster. And if they're not, then that means that the monsters are probably going to be able to reach the wizard in a room. And so, and, and probably the wizard is going to be a prime target for Zargon when it comes up to the monster's turn. And so I found that many people who are playing the wizard are not all that uh, eager to leave their wizard within range of a move and attack by a monster at the end of the round. So instead, even if they could go in and get line of sight to a monster to make a spell attack, they typically don't. Now, now one of the first things the wizard should get is a staff, which allows the wizard to attack diagonally. And of course, this is a fantastic item for the wizard, because that allows the wizard to come in and roll one uh, attack die. It's not all that much. But the wizard would be able to roll one attack die and make it a diagonal attack in the event that the other heroes were not able to take out everything in the room. But then again, that's having the wizard play cleanup with a, a staff, which he's really not very effective with. It might make more sense for the barbarian to play last and then be able to get in there and throw the three. That also means that if the wizard is going to cast a spell, then the wizard goes into the room first, sees all of the monsters, positions himself wherever he wants to be so the other heroes can defend him. The wizard casts the spell, if he would like, and then all of the other heroes come into the room and surround the wizard, protect him, and then throw the other attack dice at the monsters inside. Really, the only downside to that strategy is that sometimes there are traps in the room. And of course, the wizard doesn't have very many body points, and so if the wizard steps inside and falls in a pit or is stabbed by a spear trap or something like that, that does hurt the wizard more than it would hurt the barbarian. So that's a trade-off there, but generally speaking, we found that it's worth it. Have the wizard start off, lead the way with a magical attack, and then uh, let the wizard, uh, let the barbarian follow up. So at its core, you want to be sure that all of the heroes are playing to their maximum ability every turn, and they're not leaving things on the table for Zargon to take advantage of when it comes around to Zargon's turn. We were talking about how the game allows the heroes a lot of control over the game by allowing them to open the doors. And that means that the heroes should, in general, open doors early in their lineup, early in the round. 
That way they've got all the heroes with all their different abilities to handle whatever might be in the room before they uh, it goes to Zargon's turn. Opening doors late in the round ensures that, well, the opportunity to throw combat dice have already passed during the round, and now you're going to be dealing with potentially monsters and, you know, whatever else, mainly monsters, in the room once it's opened. We tend to find that the heroes are most effective when they are all together. Each of the heroes have different abilities, and they augment one another. So having just the wizard by himself or just the barbarian by himself, that doesn't work as well as having all of them work in tandem together. And then, of course, the last thing that I'll talk about is search strategy, because there is a little bit to that, because what can be searched for in the game? You can search for traps, treasure, and secret doors. And there is an order to this, because if there are traps in the room and you search for treasure or secret doors, then you're going to spring the traps. So kind of standard operating procedure for the heroes is once all the monsters are dead, because the monsters have to be dead before you can search, once the room is clear, whoever's turn it is is the one who searches for traps, and then somebody else searches for treasure and then searches for secret doors. What causes this to kind of go awry, of course, is if you have a player who really wants the treasure and the hero goes in and search for, searches for treasure either out of order or chooses to search for treasure instead of searching for secret doors. In a later video, I do want to talk about the spell strategy in particular, but for now, I think I'm going to leave it here. Please, if you haven't seen our 3D uh, Hero Quest board build, please go back to my channel and look that up. We built it uh, a jumbo-sized board out of foam, and also please go back to my channel in general. I've got a whole lot of other videos on board gaming, fantasy, even action figures, a lot of those topics all organized by playlist. Please go back there, pick the playlist you're interested in, and, uh, and dig into it. I look forward to seeing you in another video, and until then, happy gaming.